what is today. It's Wednesday. So exciting. Always excited. We made it to Wednesday. It is week three already in the basic class. I can't even believe it. How has your week been? Tell us what you're doing, where you're from. Um, don't forget to put in your tulips. Tulip tribes, uh, tulip tribe members are um, members of the Flower Lovers Club, um, current, past students. Um, so make sure to put those in there so we know who you are. I'm teacher Marisa. I'll be here with you today for an hour. Teacher Carolyn is here with me. Say hi, Carolyn. Hi, everybody. <laughs> She's going to be watching YouTube. Um, same, with, same with Susie. She'll be on YouTube as well. And Leanne is here. Say hi, Leanne. Hello, everybody. <laughs> I get to be on the other side. <laughs> Leanne's on Facebook and as well as Caledonia. Let's see who's in. Teacher Shell is teaching the uh, second half of the day. Um, Teacher Michelle's out there as well, but I think she's off, I think, in a few moments. But um, we have a full house in here today and a total of six. No, oh, six. That's, that's next class. <laughs> Actually, next class is, I, I can't even keep track right now, but uh, four students in there. Um, so, yes. Let's see. Um, today, we are going to talk about... Uh, emphasizing your materials, really working with a budget, but make it dazzle. Um, I find working with materials that, especially when um, someone is on a budget, working with materials that may not be as prestigiously priced, but make a really big impact. Um, that's kind of where I go on that end. Um, let's see, what else can I share with you? It's just been, it has been just such a busy past few months here. Um, I am just, this is just almost therapy for me, so I'm really excited to be here. Is there anything going on out there? Do we, is there a lot of people? You know, so happy you have to be a here. Full house. It's just been, all your regulars are here saying hello and checking in with you. I think you're going to be busy. They like this idea of this class. Okay, so today, typically, I don't know if you've all noticed, typically we try to get in three arrangements. I'm actually going to try to get in four. Whoa. Overachiever. I was just going to say overachiever. But it's going to be a progression because, again, we're working with, we're going to work with a budget. So I'm going to start with just a simple bud vase and then progress into larger containers, but they're not going to be really, really large. We're not going to really talk about um, price, um, but we can kind of gauge it as like, this is not going to be how much it's going to cost, but we can do like 10, 20, 30, and the last one's going to be priceless because it's going to be more of an art piece. I have to have that at the end as the showstopper. Can I just say this? I, I, I keep wanting to touch my, um, we, when we teach, we have a microphone. And I keep wanting to adjust. So if you see me doing this, I'm not, it's not a weird twitch. It's just, I keep thinking I have a microphone on my face. Um, and please don't, um, don't hesitate to ask any questions, okay? Um, so what do you think? Should I just get started? Because I have four, okay? So let's just get started. You've got oh. a first-timer, Sharita. So Sharita, the first time. hi. Elisa had her first interview. <gasps> Alisa, is it Hol Holloway? Alisa Holloway, I think? No, uh, me? Yeah. Yes, yes, oh my gosh. I think she's actually local too, I think. I think you were in Portland, right? <gasps> Congratulations. Oh, you'll get the job. You'll totally get it. Okay, so um, let's just say someone comes in and just wants something really, really simple. Um, so really, when someone is working with a budget but you want it to make real you want it to look as much as possible scale in my opinion or perceived value is the one thing that's just going to make it look bigger so i actually can probably go taller but um, to start off if you pick a container or a vase that's tall you're going to be um you're going to be right there so for this one um it's gosh this is maybe about Oh, this is probably about a foot high, maybe 12 inches. Um, and then also picking a vase that um, has a smaller neck. Um, this kind of actually gives you the illusion that it's 
there's quite a lot of space in here, but the opening here is not very big. So not very many flowers are gonna fit in here. Also, I don't know if you can see the whole set. We have a nice variety. I'm not even gonna even use even probably half of these flowers, but we're gonna make it look like lots of money. Okay, let's get started. Oh, Leanne has a question. John wants to know what makes it a simple Bundy, and Renee loves your simple Bundy. <laughs> what makes it a simple Bundy? I had to grab my curly willow. What makes it a simple bud vase? Well, there's not gonna be a lot of material in it. So I think that's the simplicity behind it. Does that make sense? So um, it, there, it, it's just gonna be more minimal. So I would say minimal in simplicity is very similar. Hopefully that makes sense. All right, so to start, Let's see. I don't even know if I'm going to start with the curly willow, actually. I'm going to grab, let's see, looking around, knowing that my neck is quite skinny, I'm going to grab a flower that is skinny as well. So I'm going to grab some scabiosa. And I'm going to go really as tall as I can. I'm gonna grab some scabios. I'm also gonna grab some CD eucalyptus. Be right back. And if my mommy's watching, I just wanna say, hi mommy, I love you and I miss you. <laughs> What's really great about the seeded eucalyptus too is that it really unifies with the vase too. So I'm just taking some of the leaves off because it's a bit bushy. And we want to keep this simple. And this will drape nicely over the container. It's going to be very, very almost muted in color. Very, I don't, oof. I might have to put this back there because it's not going to be tall enough. Okay, so this is where it gets interesting because. Now I'm designing backwards. Yes, you will need to put it back on the back. You can't table. see it. You can't see the scabiosa. Okay. The right. Okay. So I want to go as tall as possible because I want to make this look like a lot of money. I mean, I want to keep going. This is not tall enough. So I am going to move it back. So let's see if we can go even taller. I got to find really tall one. I can't use this one because that one's a bit curved and it's not going to go where I want it to. Maybe place this one behind. I like how these kind of dance. Maybe they can, can go in the back there. Ooh, so pretty. Very, very simple and elegant. Um, we not, we're not going to stop there. Let's see. Let's bring the purple color all the way down. Maybe with some status, just a little bit. Just to pull the color all the way down. We're so quiet out there today. That scabiosa looks beautiful on camera. Oh, good. Good, good, good. Well, while you're doing that, let me give a shout out to our YouTubers this afternoon. We have Janet, Vicki, Garrett, Debbie, Rhonda, Natalie, Valerie, Nicole, Christy, who's first time watching from Australia. Oh, hi! And Liz, Aya, Norma, and Neves from Croatia. Wow! Thank you for joining! Okay, so let's just not stop there. Um, I mean, I could, um, but... In my opinion, first of all, the color is just so soothing. Um, the, we have beautiful, clean lines. The rhythm of your eyes just really just go follow all the way down and it's quite tall. So there's literally what, two main flowers in here and it's, I don't know, I, I think it's quite stunning. But what if, 
Oh, you guys, I don't even know if I even want to put that in there. Ooh, I like the line. So actually here, let's do this. Let's roll our, oh, Leanne has a question. Liz wants to know if she can do a partial payment, a payment plan on distance learning if she's an international student. Yes, so partial payment plan. So if you're interested in our online classes, um, you don't have to pay for the whole entire thing. Um, what happens is, so the basic program, the online is 31 segments. But if you want to do the payment program, we break it down into three segments. And uh, each segment is only $7.25. So you can absolutely do that. You can do it from anywhere around the world. And also, you can always, well, you probably don't want to call because a little far away, but you can always email us too. So um, if you do uh, want to go into further detail, just give us an email. Let's see. There. Put something there. And then what if, what if, we grab some bear grass. Okay, so the trick with bear grass, let's see if this even works. First of all, don't ever take your hands and try and manipulate them this way. It will cut you because they're like blades. So you don't want to really squeeze. Then, this is just a pet peeve of mine. If you were ever to come actually here in the classroom, or you may hear this in a submission, try to get, well, do have all of your blades going in the same way, in the same direction, <clears throat> excuse me, laying on the same way. You don't want them because um, they, they fall in different ways and it just kind of looks a bit messy. So make sure they're all laying on top of each other nicely. Let's see, what if we, you can do this too. You can take your grasses and just kind of go like this. Very sturdy. So we'll just bend a little bit. This is gonna be tough because there's not a lot of room in here. Let's give this a cut. Here, the classroom out there jamming to some, some music out there. You know, they seem to be having a lot of fun. <laughs> Your online advanced student, Tabitha, said she's having a ball, and thank you for all of your guidance and your critique. She's having Yay! a good time. Yay! You are welcome. Okay, so this is looking a little, like, not unified with the rest of the arrangement. So I need to grab some wire. While you're doing that, I'm going to give a shout-out to... Helen, it's her for, excuse me, first time joining us on live on YouTube today. Hi, thank you for joining. I, oops, I just have to find the right gauge. Okay, so this is a little trick for you all. So what I wanna do, cause this just looks, this just looks weird. So what I wanna do is I wanna take all this grass and come around this way, maybe. Maybe we'll go back there. To do that, I'm going to use a technique that all, well, for those of you that have taken class with us, I'm going to do a technique that we teach you when we're um, doing wiring and taping. It's not, it's not hair pinning. It's not piercing. I'm going to see if anyone can guess this as I do it. Hopefully you all can see. Is well, you're doing that, I'll give a shout out. You've got so many people on Facebook with you. Arthur, Debbie, Kim, Nikki, Sharon, Karen, Sarita, Kathy, Julie, Donna, Elisa, Scott, Tomasi, Rose, Gayla, John, Renee, Elvira, Janet, Rochelle, Leticia, Adela, Roger, Tabitha, Carmen, Eric, Bernadette, Floor, Janira, Robin and Christine, and I lost track. There were more. So many. Hi, everybody. Thank you so much for joining. Did anyone guess that wiring technique there that I did? I mean, it's kind of process of elimination because I gave you, like, the two main ones. Anybody? So I'm going to actually, does this actually show? Oh, I got okay. clutch wrapping. <gasps> There, you got it. Jim Doyle. Jim Doyle, good job. Jennifer came in right after the 
Yep. Tabitha got it. You got it. You got it. Clutch Tabitha wrap. Got it. <laughs> okay. Debbie on YouTube got it. Yay! Good job. Okay. So I don't know about you, but if I had 20 bucks and the florist made me this, I'd be quite happy with this. Not saying this is $20 because we don't know how much this vase is. This is a specialty vase. But you can see going as tall as possible for one. Uh, people, people relate um, a lot of money to like size. So the taller you go, it just looks like more money. This is when we really start to embrace space as well. This is my, this, this costs money. Yeah. And then putting just a few little extra um, touches in there just to make it a bit different and elevate it. I don't know. I would be totally all over this. I think this is quite lovely. But oh, I hope you like it. Let's move on to the next one. I think you did good. And oh, good. good. <laughs> I don't know how you're going to get four in here. <laughs> okay, so let's go to the next one. I'm kind of, if you notice, kind of keeping, um, I feel just, oh, sorry, I've had my mask on all day and I just feel naked. I feel like, oh my gosh, I need my mask on. Um, <laughs> um, I've kind of kept it in a little bit of a... Um, I tried to unify all of the containers, if you will. So this looks quite similar to the one before, but we're just gonna make this next one a little bit different. Again, um, on a budget, so it's not, we're not gonna use, I never like to use the word expensive. Um, so I say, I like to use the word prestigious. So I'm not gonna use anything quite prestigious um, priced wise. I'm really paying attention again to flowers that are less prestigiously priced but really, really give an impact. A really good example would be, um, so even considering your lily types, there's Asiatic and there's Oriental. This is an Asiatic. These, are, these tend to be actually uh, cheaper than um, uh, Oriental, so you may want to consider using this variety, and they're quite showy for the price. So that's kind of one example. So Julia wants to see a close-up of the bud base, but Julia, what we'll, we'll do, pictures. we'll get good pictures of it and post it tomorrow so that you can get a really good close-up of that. Okay, so let's grab this amazing curly willow. Oh, did you have, no you didn't. You're just getting your hair out of your face. Um, yeah. <laughs> oh, I also wanted to mention too, all of my designs today are foam free. You want to know why? Can anyone guess? Did you run out of foam? <laughs> no, because it takes too much time and we're on a budget. Foam costs money. Some water does too, but I'm just like, you know what? No, for me to tell you the truth, if I have to do something fast or really on a budget, for me designing directly in a vase is faster. Um, it wasn't at first for me. That took me a very, very long time. But, you know, that's just one less thing that we have to charge for. So I'm not going to use any foam. Another thing to consider would be um, if you have a client that's working in a budget, um, suggest that they can bring um, you their containers. Maybe they have specialty containers um, and that way they don't have to pay for the vessel and that's just even more money that you get to work with. So what I'm going to do here is just take some of this curly willow I'm just going to put it inside, just kind of, actually that's really not going to do anything because I just sunk right all the way down to the bottom. So we'll just take a longer piece and just kind of wrapping it around just a little bit. So I'm just making a little armature inside. Look, we can even just keep a little piece hanging out like that. That's okay. Um, I kind of want another piece hanging out like that because that will kind of actually help me determine my form. It may end up getting lost, but let's just see if we can work with it. Let's see. Let's see. So Julia wants to know if flowers will last longer in water than they do in foam. That was the other uh, point that I was going to say. For me, I believe flowers like to be in directly in water, and I believe they do last longer. Um, but they still last well in foam just as long as the foam is always hydrated. Um, so just make sure you um, 
<laughs> pretty much I whenever especially when a client would come in and they would pick foam arrangements I always just tell them to make sure that they always keep the the vessel full with water we actually used to put little care tags on all of our vases um, and foam arrangements and actually um, would have instructions on how to take care of your flower so you know this arrangement has foam make sure it has water for your flowers to be happy okay so um we just have our curly willow inside the vessel here. Let's see. I don't think you need to do anything else. Oh, I'm just done? <laughs> now that is an arrangement on a budget. <laughs> I think it needs a little bit more. Hey, you know what? Let's actually just play then for a minute. Let's, okay, I'm so excited right now. I'm gonna lose time, but it's okay. Let's actually just make an arrangement just out of curly willow and see how pretty it looks. Sorry, Eliane, you totally distracted me. So guess what? We are going to make an arrangement that's going to look really cool just out of curly willow. Curly willow. So JJ had a, a great question for you. Since you're using water instead of foam, how often do you change the water in your vase? Great question. Um, typically, well, it depends on how big your vase is, but typically, I would say like three days, every three days or so, or really just when it gets yucky or when the water level goes down. Okay, so I'm totally changing my, um, what I was gonna do here. Cause I think that we could still do this on a budget. It's just gonna be curly willow inspired. Let's see. This is Leanne's fault, so. <laughs> you gave me the idea. Uh -oh. Okay, so I'm just kind of manipulating. Whoops, we'll pretend that just didn't happen. <laughs> um, also, I wanted to point out, this almost looks like hair. Okay, I'm gonna turn this around really quick. Um, when you're working, like, <laughs> When you're, when you're working in a budget too, I, I tend to make all of my designs one-sided. That way you're, you don't have to utilize all these materials um, all the way around because it kind of ends up, it does actually end up taking up more materials. So I typically just um, design things to one side. So that bud vase that we made earlier is gonna be one-sided. Everything I'm gonna make today is gonna be one-sided. Okay. So I'm gonna turn this back around. Start with your viewers have vases of curly below in their homes. Oh, cool. I wonder, are they rooting? Are they rooting yet? Or is it dry? Or is it dried and crunchy? <laughs> and Patty wants to know if curly willow is very expensive. Um, well, I think it depends on where you are. Um, coming from California, it wasn't, it wasn't too expensive. Um, I don't, I unfortunately don't know how much it costs here, but I think it all just depends on where you are. Um, but I would, I would say that it's, it, it's definitely, it definitely doesn't cost as much as cherry blossoms would be or something like that. So um, I would say it's definitely a budget friendly branch. I think out of all of the branches that, that could give your uh, designs character, um, I'd say with curly willow would, would curly willow would be the the most budget friendly. Okay, so let's see here. Let's put, let's put in a hydrangea just right here. Oh, look at it. Look. Oh, hmm. I'm gonna turn it back around. This one's funky. Hmm, 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 hmm. I was going to put iris in this, but we have so much movement that I don't think the iris is really going to, it's going to be too straight. Um, they're saying the bases that they have in their homes are dry willow. Oh, so they're, they're, they're crunchy. That's okay. When it, um, oh, you know what you should consider if you wanted? Because Christmas time is coming up. So is Halloween. Um, why not paint it? Paint it black, paint it silver or gold for Christmas time. That would be really pretty. Scott thinks you need to use cattails. <laughs> I'm gonna use that in the next one. You have to wait, Scott. <laughs> 
So Janet is curious, what do you do when the curly willow starts to root and sprout? Um, I mean, it just depends. If it's, if it's in your home, you could just, you could leave it or probably, you know, has anyone, has anyone ever, has that ever happened to anybody and have they ever taken and actually planted it outside? I wonder if that would, well, probably lives in only certain places, but um, if it ever happens here with us, I end up cutting it because then the curly willow gets super crazy and then it starts um, sprouting and so I kind of like to stunt it a little bit. Um, but yeah, I wonder if it would, if it would grow once it rooted. Do you think it would? Yeah, it would. It's very invasive, so you might oh. want to put it in a planter versus in the ground. Very invasive. <laughs> okay. So true. All right. Well, why not? Okay, this is looking... <laughs> There's only one flower in here. Um, I quite think this is actually absolutely amazing. Okay, so I'm going to add something over here on this side. And what I'm going to do is... oh. I'm going to take my aspidistra and I'm tearing it almost going to the very edge with my fingernail. If you really want to see this up close, you guys have to come to advanced class. Okay, so it almost looks kind of feathery, right? And would be really pretty if it was we had a little fan blowing or something and this kind of blows in the air. So what if we put, oh my goodness. Thank you, Leanne, for the, I, oh, look at it. Oh my goodness, look at it. So pretty. Okay, I wanna take it home. Okay, let's see. Um, we want to know what the brown hole is. Oh, excuse me, yes, this is a gonus. And it is absolutely fabulous right now. I love it when it's, um, this really dark chocolate color. Okay, I need to turn it around again because let's see if we need other things. Oh my gosh, I don't want to put anything else in it. No. Okay, so you, for, for those of you that know me, okay, I'm, I'm a very, very simplistic designer. There is not a lot of material in here. And I don't know about you guys, but this, I'm just like, there's just so much going on and just character, but everything is rhythmic, rhythmically there. We have a strong focal point here, but then your eyes just go up and around and there's this cool thing here and then the curly wheel comes out here and there's depth here and then you have line from here to here. It's just, I don't know. Do you like it? And there's literally, there's one flower in here. We've got Wowza, cool, <laughs> cool, love it, so. So yes, so challenge yourself here. I mean, I really, this was not what I was planning on making. Again, thanks to Leanne, and then we just did something with Curly Willow and we just went with it, right? So there's, I can almost say what actually, mm, no, I was gonna say, because uh, this is the focal point, but the majority of the material was curly willow, but everything does support it. It's just, uh, I, love, I love this one. Okay, I'm gonna move this one aside. So while you're pulling things, I'll do a shout out. We've got um, Christine, Jennifer, Hilda, Jennifer, again, two Jennifers, Karen, Gracie, Kathleen, Renee, Cindy, Julie, Mike, Rick, Sandy, Sandy, thank you for finding the error in my email. I appreciate that. <laughs> I need somebody to prove me. So good there you job. go. Thank you. <laughs> Beverly, Anna, Robin, Christina, Helen, Rudy, Maggie, Catherine, Sharon, and Jody, and probably many more than I missed. Yay! So many people. Okay. So same thing here. We're moving forward. Um, this the the diameter here is probably the same as um, the vase previously, but it's a little bit, excuse me, taller. Um, so I'm going to go tall again. We're going to put a little bit more flowers in here, but it's still going to be minimal. So I'm just going to put in some of my seeded yuke on one side. Um, hmm. Yes, Leanne. Rudy wants to know if you. Spray color tinting, the color transfer 
Does it shorten the life of the material? The like spray paint? Yeah, like the design master and stuff. Um, in my opinion, um, it's it almost seems like it locks moisture in. It seems to it's I in my opinion it seems to make the flowers last longer. Um, but it depends on your usage too. Don't you know like douse it with the paint. Um, just a light dusting um, will do. Uh, but I find that whenever I have color enhanced materials, um, they they actually dry really well and they look great. So. Um, but then again, you have to depend, it depends on the flower too. Um, like let's just say for instance, um, like if this was, say if this was a white scabiosa and I was gonna, I wanted to paint it blue or something, I would, if anything, just do a light like mist over it just to um, give it like a nice little tint. Um, but if you just really paint it, I don't think it's gonna like it because it's such a delicate flower. So I kind of sort of answered your question. Um, so hopefully that helps. Okay, so I'm just creating a little foliage weave here. So just creating a little bit of an armature so using some leather leaf here. And notice just making it just a little bit different, putting leather leaf to one side and eucalyptus on the other just to make it just a little bit different so when you're working in a budget just try to do i mean just try to do one or two things that that'll just introduce your clients and just to, into something different um, so if you're used to grinning symmetrically you know, one here, one here, one here, one here. So it's all symmetrically all the way around. Maybe try grouping it, something one on this side, one on this side, just to slowly introduce and just to make it just a little bit different. Um, Cause I feel like people um, these days are really starting to embrace um, things that, that are just a little bit different. And if they don't know that you, if they don't know that you offer it, then they're not gonna know that you can do it. Oh, let's see, what else? Karen wants to know if you could paint the inside of a vase or if it would hurt the flowers. That's a really good question. I have never done that before. Do you know the do you know the answer to that? I don't really I don't it doesn't seem like it would stay well. Like yeah. You would scratch it, but you put it in. Right. Hand, but yeah. But I personally have not done it either. Have you, Carolyn? I have done it with the design master and then sprayed the inside with a Dresden clear glaze, which works well. Just don't paint it with like acrylic paints or anything like that. Otherwise, that's going to peel off your glass. So, so you do that second coating of a glaze mm -hmm. to secure it. Good. Okay. So there's our expert. So that don't use from the peanut gallery. don't use <laughs> acrylic paint inside. That's yeah, what you were saying. <clears throat> All right, let's see. Okay, so see here, um, there's just foliage in here, but you can really see that there's there's a purpose to the whole form here. Okay, um, it is a little bit longer on this side, but we're going to work with that. Um, so when you're when you're designing, especially um, I think really with any type of arrangement vase foam if you're greening first just pretend like you're making an arrangement with just your foliage because if you set yourself up really pretty then how can it how can it not be pretty okay so let's oh let's see if i can remember i think it's called nine bark yes, right okay yes. <laughs> okay so nine bark let's use this and you think i'm going to cut this in half i don't think so of course not. We're going as tall as possible, and I'm probably going to have to put it back on the back table again. Because the taller you go, it looks like more money. And what's going to be really fun with this one is it's going to, well, in my mind, it's going to be Western line inspired. Okay, so trying to do a Western line without foam. One's gonna go over here. 
So I'm creating a really strong line there in the center, yeah? Pretty. Grab some more agonis. And see how this already naturally drapes nicely. So you can, okay, looking at this, you can already see the form sort of starting to happen. We have the line here and then a little bit longer line over here. So I'm just following it. And then the line coming over here, cascading over to the left. So let's just enhance this line over here. Mm, mm, mm. Okay, let's see if let's see if this does it. So you can already see the outline of a western line, right? Mhm. Mm I'm sure you're all sitting there at home going, "Yeah, I see it." Right? <laughs> oh, good. Good, good, good. Okay, I'm not gonna put the cattails in yet because my weave, I know I can feel it, it's not strong enough, so I'm gonna start to build from the bottom up. Okay, so I think I am gonna put a hydrangea in just, just to add a bit of brightness at the bottom and some visual weight here. We'll put right there at the base. Then we'll grab one of our, grab one of our lilies. And I'm gonna put this on top of the hydrangea just to give it some depth. So the contrast between the dark, um, nine bark and then the yellow of the lily really really just excites the eye right um, and then if you kind of look down you have this really great texture and contrast of the um, hydrangea there and really again there's still only two flowers in here we're really utilizing um, line and scale with our foliage and although the these are these are in here the the nine bark and the agonis these are a little bit more of a specialty foliage. They may be a little bit more um, expensive in your area, but it's just still just a little bit different. And your customer customer might be willing to pay for that because they've never seen it before. You know, they're like, oh, I don't want leather leaf anymore. Oh, but you're like, oh, but there is leather leaf in here. But now we're just, we just got this fabulous chocolate foliage. You have to use these words like that. You gotta sell it. Okay, I think we can add our cattails in now. Okay, Scott, pay attention. I don't actually call these cattails. I call them corn dogs. So that's what I call these. So I've always called these look like corn dogs. Okay, so let's go and place these to follow the line of the nine bark. I wanted that one actually taller, but it's okay. Maybe we can go taller with this one. So we're just enhancing the line here. Did that even go in the base? Yes, it did. And you see how I'm staggering the heights? When you stagger heights, your eyes move just a little bit faster. So it just gives it just an, a nicer transition for your eye to follow through. Okay. All right, that looks good. Um, so then let's put something over here. I'm gonna use some snap. Ooh. It's crunchy down here. I'm gonna grab some snapdragons. So you can see here, oh, look at this one. So we may go, well, let's see. So let's just take advantage of this beautiful line that the snapdragon's already doing for us. Look, oof. And I, I did not like go back and like, I wasn't you know, in the back earlier, like trying to bend these snaps and stuff. Like this is just how they came. And I'm just working with what I have here. <laughs> I hope that has a little, oops. Okay, if you ever are inserting a stem and it feels like it went in like butter, it's because it's not in the base. <laughs> so let's turn this around and 
put this in the water. I can't. I don't remember if I've sh shared with it, shared this with you before. But one time, I made an arrangement at the flower shop um, without water in the vase. And the driver comes back and he's like, "Was this supposed to not have water?" <laughs> I'm like, "Ooh, whoops." <laughs> I think we're a little busy that day. Julian wants to know if you cover your stems in the vase or let them show through the vase. You're getting ahead of me there. I'm, I'm getting there. I'm getting there. <laughs> um, you can, but I'm going to show you a way to not if you didn't want to. Um, okay, so let's see. So we have, okay, so we have a little hole right here. Hmm, 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 hmm. I don't want to step in the way. Maybe just another snapdragon. Just a bit lower here. So again, there's not very many flowers in this one. Oh, anything else? Let's try. Just, just a bit. Okay, this is, this, you're probably going, oh no, no, oh no. This is just going to add a little bit of brightness to it. Because I have a little hole there. And what this is going to do is it's kind of going to unify. Um, even though the little mini, mini green hydrangeas are green, they still have, they still kind of look white-ish. So what if we just tuck this guy just in there just a little bit. Oh, I see. I think that just sweetens it a little bit. I like it. Take a little bit off here. So again, there's a little bit more in this one, right? Flower-wise, material-wise. Oh, now we need one more piece right here. <laughs> Just a little bit. And so there is Western line inspired, it would be really grand if we had um, maybe like orchids or something to shoot out on this side. We don't, um, but this still gives you a strong enough line to give the Western line look. And these cattails are just a bit crooked. There we go. So there's not a lot of flowers in here. There is a bit more, but um, it's quite impactful right, because of, um, we have a strong focal area here. Um, we just have very nice lines. And when you, I find that sometimes when you group things, um, it just defines those placements even more. It really defines the lines. And especially like, you know, you have four snapdragons. It's quite impactful to see those four grouped together. Okay, so as far as the stems go, I'm gonna pull this guy up. We can leave it here, right? And I will say, I did dig through probably about 50 Aspidistra, because I knew there was gonna be one in there that had variation in there. Um, the reason why I didn't wanna use just green, I just wanted, excuse me, just a little bit of contrast, just a little bit of visual interest. So all I'm gonna do is just cut here Gotta make sure it's nice and pretty. Just lift up a little bit. Put this down here in the front, and then you can just fold over. Maybe just pull it off to the side because you don't you don't want to you don't want it to look like a tongue, like that. So maybe just off to the side. Look. So some people like to put the leaf in first. Um, I don't, because when I used to do that, when I'm designing, the stems would go in front of the leaf. So I just add it at the end. And you don't have to do a wrap, so it's just right there in the front. It's really easy. And you see how, can you imagine if that was just the green one? It would still be fine, but this is just extra like, ooh. So hope you like this one. And they're showing a lot of love for it. Yay! It. Okay. My showstopper, I'll be right back. Let's get this out of the way. So Kim, Harmony, Jerry, Judith, Annalise, Jillian, Karen, Diane, and Jennifer have all joined in with you today too. Hi. 
Hi, thank you. Okay, 15 minutes to do this one. I'm really, really, really excited. You all, um, I'm sure most of you have seen me work with this one before. Um, the only reason why this arrangement wouldn't be on a budget is because of the container, okay? The client would be paying for this container. But let's just say the, the, the container, the client came in with this really great container, what would you work with to make this look just even more amazing? Well, you can go outside and pick a free hydrangea. No, you still have to charge for it. Did you see this? I picked this one. Oh, wow. Yeah. I love this color. We, were, uh, we actually saw this when uh, Leanne took us out to Nell. And I was out walking my dog yesterday, and I've been thinking about it. I'm like, I'm just going to go grab it. So um, I don't know if, honestly, it was because of the fire that made it kind of gray or whatever. But it's this, how would you even describe this color? It's like a grayish, lavenderish, seafoam green-ish. That's the color. Maybe that'll be the Pantone, of the color, Pantone color of the year next year. Okay, so let's see. I definitely did pick flowers for this one. So I'm actually just gonna turn this around and start with some plumosa. Found some beautiful long pieces. Oh, and by the way, there's actually floral netting inside of this container here because I needed a little bit of a little bit of an armature and or structure to hold my flowers in place here. So everybody's loving the container and wanting to know where they can get it and basically you can only get it on my shelf. <laughs> yeah, you can only get it off the shelf, right? Yeah, like I said, um, I've been, I love this container. For, for me, and I think I've told, uh, have mentioned this to all of you before, but for me, the container is what really inspires me. Um, so sometimes, sometimes the flowers do, but usually it's the container. I think I want this guy over here. So this plumosa is giving it this beautiful, beautiful line. I'll show you here in a second. Oh, this is so pretty. See, okay, we're done. We're, see, we're even done here too. So let's turn this around. Let's see, look how pretty, how it just comes forward. Oh, it's so pretty. All right, so I'm gonna, I'm so excited to, I'm really excited to make this design. Ever since I saw this, what was that, two weeks ago, I think? Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. So let's go ahead and place this in. What's actually really cool with this hydrangea and this uh, container, this container almost has like this gray um, kind of like tone in its texture here. So this is going to, okay, this, this container is really hard to work in because it's very, oh, oddly shaped. All right. Then I'm going to place in some. Asiatic lilies. Let's place some of this under here right on top. So you all can probably see a little bit of a pattern here. I use lilies and hydrangeas in almost all of them, all of the arrangements, because they're showy. And I, again, I don't know where, depending on where you're all um, located, but the mini, mini green hydrangeas are pretty reasonably priced. And the thing about them is they like last forever. They last really, really long. Oh my so Brenna God. said that she thought that might be a UCI container, which is possible. Ooh. Let's, let's see. It is. I see the little gold sticker on the bottom. <laughs> I saw it. So it is a UCI. It's a UCI. Okay. Thanks, Brenna. <laughs> Hi, Brenna. 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 Um, I think I want to put one more lily towards the back. Let's see. So 
I challenge all of you, right? Try to see what you can do with just minimal flowers. We can be quite surprised. Maybe right, okay, like that. Okay, turn this around again. Then we have some snowberry. I believe this is from Teacher Shell's yard. So how fabulous is this? I'm gonna turn this around again. You guys are so quiet. I haven't had any questions. You know they're in awe of your work. Are you're they? Is anyone <laughs> is anyone even out there? <laughs> Am I just deciding all by myself with Leanne and Carolyn in the house? <laughs> yeah, it is. Um, and they've got the link in now for UCI, so you oh, can good. find that. Um, and it has been confirmed that that's where it's from. Hmm. Okay, so placing, oh my goodness. Okay, let's, oh, the snowberry is so pretty. I'm really sorry I can't design this the other way, but it's, it's part of the surprise when I turn it down, because I hope, when I turn it down, when I turn it around, I hope when I turn it around, you guys are like, <gasps> That's my goal. <laughs> You're already, wow. Look at it from the back side, too. All right. So just trying to get these snowberries exactly where I want them. Oh, I wish I had just a bit more, but it's okay. These are so pretty. Gosh, I don't even know what else we can put in here. You know, Marisa, a big shout out to you for doing such a grand job. And a request to all of you, if you would share this out, let's make Marisa famous. Let's go Whoa. her. So tag a friend and share this out so that they can all see Marisa's creative genius. So, Leanne wants you to pimp me out. Okay. <laughs> yes. Share. <laughs> share. Share. Share the world. Yes. Let everybody know. You should. Um, because you know the thing is, um, I find um, especially when we when we start teaching um, linear design Ikebana here, um, so many people I would say, I don't say so many people, but the majority of our common customers um, think that flowers are just you know it's just mass arrangements. You know they don't really understand like form and line and space, right? Um, so I feel like I, I also feel like it's the way that you. Um, sell your flowers you know i mean this is a custom piece i mean i could sell this for a thousand dollars because i made it yes leanne vanji one of your online students <gasps> that graduated that that just got her just cfd, got her CFD. Congratulations. congratulations yay see scott has a question to you and everybody mm -hmm. what is your favorite high-end filler flower Ooh. hmm well, hmm. Let, let me think about that for a minute. The first thing that comes off the top of my head, but you know what? This is funny. I don't even know if this would be considered a filler flower. What? It, well, maybe it is. Hanging amaranthus. But I don't. It is a filler, but it doesn't feel like how we want it to. You know what I mean? So um, that has a very specific purpose, in my opinion. But hmm. You might scoot that oh. table that way just a little bit. There yeah. you go. And then scoot. I'm not done. I'm not done. That way it shows really clearly on camera. Oh, they're just so beautiful. It's, it's a pretty one. Um, I tend to like, um, there's a, uh, a filler flower called uh, Sterling Range um, that smells like juicy fruit gum. I love that. It's, it's a seasonal um, foliage. It kind of like sore. Uh, it kind of sort of looks like heather sort of it sort of kind of looks like calcinia sort of it's just not as like spiky it's a little bit more softer and more um like like poofy and flat i don't know sort of right mm -hmm. it's like acacias are really good Ooh, yeah acacia Dude. oh and barolia. Yes. oh oh what about this one um uh, leptospermum oh 
Is yeah. that what it's called? Leptospermum, right? Yeah, leptospermum, yes. Yeah. Spermum. Oh my gosh. The, they look, well, it's like the very linear um, filler flower. And I love the, they, it looks like bubblegum pink like explosions on them. Oh my gosh, I love, I love Amazing. that one. Amazing. Yeah. Okay, let me turn this around because I'm looking to see what we have here. All right, so I'm going to have to do it. Um, well, Unfortunately, I don't have the right piece of curly willow in here. Hmm. So what is Marisa gonna do? I think I just am so like obsessing about this agonis. It's so pretty. This is just gonna add, this is gonna draw your eyes back into the design here. So Let's just see what this does. I think this piece might be too big. I think so. Uh, tom tomorrow, when I take pictures of these, I might um, I might cheat and find like a, the perfect piece of curly willow and put this in here because there was a few pieces out there that I didn't bring in. So maybe I'll just do that. So this is really going to add some drama and pull your eye back through the design, so let's just scooch you over just a little bit. Oh my goodness. So this one, we didn't go very tall, which is okay. So we went a little bit wider, but we played off of the container. So again, what I'm saying budget-wise, when we're working in a budget, a good idea would be to suggest to your client or your customer, do you have any containers or anything that we could fill for you? So again, there's not much material in here. So you're really just paying for your materials and your time. So I think this is quite fab. I did four arrangements in 55 minutes. Does anyone have any questions? <laughs> Let's see, what else? I wish, hmm, let's just see. I'm trying to think if there's any other, how about, oh, let's talk about this for a second. I actually brought these out um, to actually talk about it and I forgot and I just looked and saw them. So here's a really good example about perceived value and choosing the right flowers when working in a budget. I don't know about you, I don't know, Anybody who doesn't like Billy Balls, they're just super fun. There could be someone who doesn't, but Billy Balls are quite fabulous. I'm sure most of you know, though, they're not cheap. They're so expensive. Um, so typically, if someone's working in a budget, I would not put Billy Balls in an arrangement just because they just don't make that much of an impact unless the customer understands. These days, Billy Balls are so uh, on trend. So you could do a bud vase with just three. Um, but again, the customer has to know what they're getting because if you're going to get an arrangement with just three of these, you know, sent to, you know, your, your grandmother, I don't think your grandmother is going to understand the Billy Balls. Um, she might if she's a really cool hip grandma, right? Um, but... This is just something that I just wouldn't choose if someone was uh, working within a budget. So I just wanted to show you that because I probably can almost guarantee you. Let's see. That this sunflower and this Billy Ball, I almost guarantee you that this costs more than this one. And which one looks like more money? Does that make sense? So also just purchasing and being aware of what you're buying um, really, really helps with what, um, when, we're make, when you're designing to a budget. So hopefully that was a good visual. And I think if there's any last minute questions, I think I have like still- They think you're a rock star. Oh God. So I'm thinking you're gonna, yeah. <laughs> you're gonna get some good pictures for them yeah. now so they can see. Yeah, this is what's going to be um, interesting with these pictures is um, some of these are, are kind of like so detailed and so tall. It's going to be hard, but I'll figure it out. Um, also, I wanted to mention, because we were talking about this today in class too, um, believe it or not, in my opinion, the simpler the design is, 
it's kind of they're harder because there's not a lot of material so you're you see the little flaws and you can see the line and the balance of all the elements and principles what it's missing um i don't know if you two agree but i find the simpler the arrangement is the harder it is <laughs> yeah yeah um okay um i think that went by really 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 fast um, so hopefully Leanne soon will say, hey, Marisa, do you want to do a live stream soon? And I will be like, yep. Um, thank you so much for joining. I will try to go tomorrow, tomorrow, Friday, and answer all your questions. Um, thanks again for watching. And do 